Adiapad Pro 5 14 could be one of the best mid-range laptops for 2024 for creators, students, programmers, or anyone seeking high-quality all-around laptop without breaking a bank. What makes this laptop particularly appealing for me is its combination of premium magnesium alloy chassis paired with latest Meteor Lake H-series CPU from Intel and that vivid and fast 2.8K OLED panel. All these things put together makes, in my opinion, one of the best value for money laptop for 2024. Now, if you look at design, you might argue that design is a bit plain. You know, there's not much happening here. There's only tiny Lenovo logo in a corner, but a part of that, it is very clean and stealthy. And this is what I like about IdeaPad Pro 5. On the back, we have the exhaust vents, which are rather large when compared to competition. These together with two feet and one large feet promises for rather good airflow and cooling performance. On the bottom, we can also find two down firing speakers, which are accompanied by two front firing speakers. Now, if you want to talk build quality, I have no complaints about Pro 5. If I open up the laptop and press on the keyboard area, there's no bending, there's no squeaking. It feels very, very solid all around. I think it looks fantastic. There's no wedged design. This is very much like MacBook Pro design and that gives the more space for the battery here and also more space for cooling or other components. So I'm a huge fan of this design direction. I think Lenovo should continue with it, even on the other products. Thumbs up from me, definitely. Now, before we dive into specs, let's talk about naming change. Previously, this product used to be called Adiapad 5 Pro, but in order to align with other products from Lenovo's consumer lineup, such as Yoga Pro 9 or Legion Pro 7, Lenovo has renamed this product. So for 2024, and I think it was even 2023, naming has changed to IdeaPad Pro 5. This is a 14-inch version. There is also a 16-inch version of this product. For the 14-inch mid-range laptop, port selection is rather generous. We have HDMI 2.0. Unfortunately, no HDMI 2.1, which is unfortunate, but it's kind of understandable in this price range. Then we have have two USB-C ports, one of which is Thunderbolt 4 and the other is 3.2 Gen 2. Full size SD card reader supporting SDXC UHS-1 and of course good old headphone jack. Upon opening the laptop for the first time we are welcomed by super super thin bezels and I'm a really fan of this. It's also a 16 by 10 panel but more on panel in a minute. First let's focus on the camera. So in the top we have the notch which helps open up the laptop and in this reverse notch there's a FHD webcam with AR for that sweet Windows hello because there's no fingerprint reader we can log in securely to the laptop. Now my favorite part about the webcam is actually the physical privacy shutter. Many products whether from Lenovo or from competition move to electronic shutter. Now let's get back to panel. We have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio means it's a bit taller versus 16 by 9 which is better for productivity and we also have an OLED option here now this OLED I think it looks fantastic it is a 2.8k OLED that is of course calibrated with all the standards which are kind of required these days in these price points but my favorite bit about this OLED panel is that it can reach up to 120 Hertz you can of course cap that at 60 Hertz if you want to go if you know save a little bit of the battery life there's also an IPS version available but in my opinion OLED is unmatched vividness and the brightness and the true blacks are just perfect. OLED is the best that you can probably get for the money right now. The only exception would be Mini LED, but of course Mini LED in this price range, I'll be very surprised if Lenovo would do something like that. But the IdeaPad Pro 5 has a full-size keyboard, meaning it is not shrunk down like we see on products such as X1 Nano, for example. Therefore, it should be very comfortable to type on. And I can confirm it is very comfortable. I can type on it for ages. It also has an ambient sensor for the backlight, which I'm a huge fan of, and it is nice to see even in this price range. The only downside of this keyboard probably is the travel distance. It is only 1.3 millimeters and not those sweet 1.5 millimeters, which we now see more and more products moving towards to. Trackpad is nice and spacious. It is not cramped. It is glass trackpad, so no complaints here. The input device is amazing. Keyboards and trackpad are top notch. As I mentioned before, besides the keyboard, we have the two front firing speakers. The speakers are good. They're not excellent. I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't say they're MacBook Pro or even MacBook Air quality. They have a clean sound even on higher volumes. However, they're completely lacking bass. So if you want something crisp, 
and good sound, you probably have to opt out for Bluetooth speakers or headphones. Now, iDiapad Pro 5 comes with latest Meteor Lake CPU from Intel. And it is not a U series, but it is the more powerful H series. Intel has changed their naming strategy for 2024. So now they scrapped the generation naming. For example, there will be no 14, 15 generation. Instead, now you will have a Core Ultra 5 or Core Ultra 7 or Core Ultra 9 instead of the i9, i7, i5, so on and so forth. In my opinion, this is much simpler. It is much cleaner. This product will be available with up to Core Ultra 9, the most powerful of the bunch, 45 watt H series CPU clocked at 2.35 gigahertz. Now my test unit here has only Core Ultra 7, 16 core clocked at 1.4 gigahertz. Some of you might have noticed the Arc logo next to the Intel Core Ultra 7 logo. And reason for that is that Intel has also rebranded their integrated graphics. So no more Intel Iris XE. Now all the integrated graphics on Intel based systems will be called Arc. It is part of the simplification marketing strategy from Intel. Intel also promises significant improvement in terms of GPU performance. And this is one of the reasons why this laptop on Intel will only be available on Arc integrated GPU in 2024. Previously, it used to be also available on RTX 3050. That's not the case anymore. You'll be able to get RTX 3050 on AMD version of this product, but Intel version of this product will be I plus I configuration, meaning Intel CPU and Intel GPU. Whether it's a good thing or bad thing, we'll need to wait. Unfortunately, I can't do any performance tests on this engineering sample. However, without disclosing any numbers, based on my testing and even a little bit of gaming, I can confirm that it currently sits between RTX 2050 and 3050 in terms of performance. I was really surprised. It's not bad at all. For 14 inch ultra thin laptop. And of course, this is just an engineering sample and performance might improve with later driver updates. Now, because the Intel version will only come with integrated graphics, this product will ship with 100 watt USB-C charger. However, the AMD version on RTX 3050 will ship with 140 watt USB-C charger. The Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5 faces competition from several other laptops in the market. Each competitor offers unique features that cater to different user needs. Here's a quick summary of some of the main competitors. Apple MacBook Air 13 M2. The MacBook Air 13 with M2 Apple Silicon delivers superior sound quality, a fast ARM-based experience and prolonged battery life. However, it features a smaller screen capped at 60Hz and uses only IPS technology, lacking an OLED option. Additionally, it is significantly more expensive compared to IdeaPad Pro 5. HP Pavilion Plus Both the AMD and Intel versions are available, with a 2.8K 120Hz OLED display. The 5MP AR webcam is quite decent, however, it is important to note that while the IdeaPad offers an 84 watt hour battery, the HP model only includes a 68 watt hour battery, a significant consideration if you plan to use your laptop off the charger frequently. Another advantage of HP model is its HDMI 2.1 port, in contrast to HDMI 2.0 port on the IdeaPad. However, the HP lacks the SD card slot, Asus ZenBook 14X OLED. This laptop also offers an OLED panel, as the name suggests, with a 16x10 aspect ratio and 120Hz refresh rate, similar to the IdeaPad Pro 5. And it also includes fairly large 70 watt hour battery. However, the RTX 3050's power is limited due to thermal envelope constraints. Additionally, with its entry level specifications, it can be a very compelling option for a budget conscious buyers. Huawei MateBook 14. The laptop features a somewhat unusual 3x2 aspect ratio. However, it is limited to 2160 by 1440 IPS panel with no OLED option available, and the refresh rate is capped at 60Hz. Additionally, the battery capacity is not particularly impressive, being only 56 watt hours. The MateBook 14 also uses the older Bluetooth 5.1, which could lead to a connectivity issues with some newer devices. While it includes a fingerprint reader in the power button, the webcam is disappointingly limited to 720p, which is quite low. Despite these drawbacks, it 
might still be an appealing alternative to the IdeaPad for many people as it is much more affordable. IdeaPad Pro 514 all new for 2024 introduces some notable improvement versus its predecessor. Core Ultra 9 120Hz OLED and aluminium chassis that makes for a great selling point themselves. However, even if you decide to go for more entry SKU such as Core Ultra 5, it'll still be an amazing product for emerging programmers, designers and other young creative professionals. The decision to move to integrated graphics only on Intel is questionable and only time will tell whether this integrated GPU will deliver. Otherwise, users will have to choose AMD version or just look elsewhere. On the other hand, if R will perform well, it might make product slightly more affordable compared to models equipped with NVIDIA RTX GPUs. This is truly a good all-around laptop and I hope with updates we will see even increased Intel Arc performance. Now only time will tell. Well that's it for this review. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.